All right, guys, let's talk about NFTs. What the fuck are they? And why am I seeing it everywhere on my newsfeed? To explain what NFTs are, imagine this art piece. I painted Elon Musk the other month and it's quite beautiful. Imagine I sold this art piece because it's a one of a kind actual piece of art. I sold this and the next day woke up and it's valued at $3 million. Unfortunately, this was not me. A creator named Logan Paul sold his first NFT selling virtual trading cards and in about 24 hours, they sold out to over $3 million. What the fuck is virtual art? Why are creators like Logan Paul with millions of followers getting into the crypto scene? What is going on? In this video, I'm not gonna only explain what an NFT is in the most dumbest way to explain it because I'm not that smart in the crypto scene. So I need a, like a third grade analogy of everything. I'm also going to explain how creators can utilize this, AKA you can utilize this to make money, like actual money and not like a scam of like selling random coins on the internet. So if you want to know more about what NFTs are in an easy version and know how to use this for your business, keep on watching. All right. So what is an NFT? NFT stands for non-fungible token. It's basically a digital asset. You're probably familiar with something called Bitcoin, which is a cryptocurrency. Cryptocurrency and NFTs are a little bit different. Non-fungible means... It, what does non-fungible mean? <laughs> Okay, the definition of non-fungible means you cannot replace it. It's unique. It's a one of a kind. Like for example, the Mona Lisa, if you go to the Louvre, is a one of a kind art piece, right? You can't like take half the Mona Lisa and like call that an art, right? It's it's, it's one asset, it's one whole thing. Whereas cryptocurrency and Bitcoin is ex interchangeable, right? You can have 0 0.005 of a Bitcoin and call yourself a crypto god. So the point is it's different. And I think a lot of people, including me, was confused of what the difference was. All right, so now that you know what NFT is, you're probably like, Jade, what is this still? I don't understand it. Okay, it's not interchangeable. It's a unique piece. What the fuck is this? Now, honestly, guys, I researched this for the past week intensively. I am not a crypto god at all. I'm a content creator for the past 10 years with a business. And I'm always interested of new ways to monetize and also learn new technologies. So here's the dumbed down version of like what it actually is. So a current example of how people are using the NFT technology is the NBA. They are basically selling digital clips of basketball games on the NFT marketplace. These are literally video clips of people dunking in basketball. You can tell I'm a sports person. I'm just like, <laughs> I'm pretty sure most of these are going for above $50,000, uh, which is insane for a digital clip. And this is like weird because when you think about it, right, I'm immediately like, wait a second. If people are selling $50,000 worth of video clips, why can't I just like screen record this or screenshot it, right? Like what's the point of having this experience and buying it. To understand why people are buying NFTs, even though you can't just screenshot or screen record something, is you have to understand why people have signatures in the first place, right? So if you ever go to a game, or I used to go to a lot of EDM music concerts because I love music, and I would always die if I could get the artist's signature. I remember I went to like a Bruno Mars concert and I was like 15 or 16, and I was like, oh my God, like, you know, like when you wait backstage to like get the artist to like sign your chest or something, because they're like obsessed with them, like that's essentially what an NFT is, right? You can just get a picture of Bruno Mars from stage, but if you want him to like sign something across your body, you gotta, yeah, that's exclusive, right? I actually never got Bruno Mars' signature, by the way. But if there was an NFT version, I might consider it, right? So imagine an NFT is just a digital signature. So for NBA fans or for Logan Paul diehards, you could get a digital signature version of that item. So I see this as when you buy an NFT, yes, you could just screenshot and record it, but you also have a digital asset that no one else has. Typically these clips that they're selling is there's only like 50 in the world or like 10, right? So there's a limited quantity. You in the world only have this digital asset with the with the blockchain technology, right? The token. So you have this one string of token that enables you to say, hey, I have this version. And you can also resell it. Something really cool is the resell power of NFTs, right? So say you have this asset and you want to sell it to someone else offering you more money. Therefore, you, it's an investment opportunity. So it's basically illegal to screenshot something and sell it because you don't have the cryptographic token that enables you to say I'm the owner of this asset. Oh yeah, bonus knowledge. If you're the artist selling your NFT and someone resells it, you also get a royalty of that sale, typically 10% or whatever you set it as. So what's super cool, right, is every time someone resells your art, you get a percentage back, just key, right? Because when you look at like people buying and selling the Mona Lisa, the initial artist did not get any of that shit. So I think it's a great thing for creators and artists
artists, especially to be able to get rewarded in royalties. So who's currently using NFTs? Apparently crypto art and NFTs have been in the marketplace for a while. There's a really big marketplace called Nifty Gateway that has been taken off recently, but they've been selling artwork for years. And it's it's just this year where Logan Paul, Shawn Mendes, Grimes, all these artists are starting to make it more mainstream. I believe the artist by Blau, which is 3LAU, is selling crypto art, which is his album. And basically it's sold out in like 24 hours and it sold like $12 million, which is insane. And the top 10 bidders of the NFT would get to create a direction on his next song. In addition, I kept mentioning this, but Logan Paul did sell his crypto art for $3.5 million in 24 hours because 1,772 people bought his NFT at one Ethereum. So one Ethereum is 1,500 times 1,700 people. That is that is $3.5 million. Now, before I researched this, I was thinking like, why would 1,700 pieces of art get sold from Logan Paul when Logan Paul's just literally selling trading cards? Like, what is he actually selling? And like I told you, it's basically a digital signature. So people are basically valuing Logan Paul's digital signature, but it is a wealthy game. Like, I think people have to realize that, like, I mean, I personally didn't buy Logan Paul's, you know, crypto art. I didn't personally buy all these coins because like, I don't got that bag yet. So the reason why I think a lot of people are confused is like, why would I personally buy this? But when you think about it, like, I feel like a billionaire, people love fine art. It's the reason why the Mona Lisa and all these amazing pieces are valued in millions of dollars, right? It's artists crafting their time. And I know it's weird because it's a digital component, but it's a, not a new concept, right? Like trading cards and base Ball. people with bag want special things it's exclusivity it's unique so you're right i think none of my friends are personally like buying it but i think it's important to understand like people that are at the one percent at the top looking at their new york penthouse like might consider buying this but this is why nfts are getting a really bad rep Personally, for me right now, people are arguing that NFTs are just a bubble. You know, it's just for people that are rich. And honestly, I felt that. But then when I started to look deeper, I realized there's actually more potential for everybody. And this is where I go into the conversation of the future of NFTs and why I think it's not a bubble and why most people will interact with an NFT, actually buy one in the future. So to understand this, we have to agree that like NFTs are just catered towards people that have disposable income and want cool fucking rich toys, which is cool. But I think what's super fascinating is not the NFT, but just the blockchain technology in general. There's a value to having a finite amount of things, right? If there's only 20 spots for a concert, you're running there, right? You're, you're spending money for that music concert. If there's only 50 Supreme hoodies, you're gonna line up at the store, right? And, and try to get that hoodie. When there's a limited amount of shit, people value it. And this concept is just called exclusivity. Blockchain just enables people to have exclusivity. I don't think NFTs are a bubble, but people are treating it as one. To be very honest, Logan Paul's trading card is a little itchy. I'm not gonna say the scam, but he's basically selling air. Colin and Samir, a friend of mine, made a video also explaining this a lot deeper too. But they're just like, like, why would you? I still, like, even though I'm explaining this, I'm like, why, why would someone still buy a digital trading card? It's lit you could literally screenshot it. People like Logan Paul are right now utilizing NFT at its early stages, which is basically selling art slash air. But I think there is a deeper future for it. I mean, the idea of, as a creator, selling a finite amount of things and then your audience has an investment opportunity to resell and you get royalties is a great thing. I honestly think as long as you're contributing value to whatever you're selling in the NFT, I don't think it's a bad thing. I think this technology is super interesting and useful. So this is where my next idea comes in, which is this membership idea. Like I told you, Blau, the artist I mentioned that sold his NFT for like $12 million, created this little bonus where if the top 10 NFT people that own the album or the NFT get to have creative direction on his next song. So they have like quarterly meetings where they talk about like his next song, which is basically a membership. Like when you think about NFT token holders and like there's only 20 of them, like it's a little club, right? Like I remember when I used to sell like silly bands at school and I was like trading that like I was a drug dealer. I remember like the only people that had silly bands and were trading it too became my friends. So there's a sense of community with people that have this token, right? So what I'm trying to say, is there's value, not in the art, but the community. Like if Ariana Grande said that you could have input on my next song, I'm sure a lot of yo basic bitches would be down, including me. And I think what Logan Paul failed to do was build that community, right? Because he didn't kind of create this tier or exclusive bonus where top 10 people get this. I think if he did that, then NFTs would have such a less of a bad rep of being a scam. Because I think the technology is super cool, but the community that it built on top of it is the value. All right, we're gonna do a quick little matcha break. Mm, if you're so far enjoying this video, Make sure you give this video a like and let me know in the comments below your thoughts of NFT because this shit's confusing. All right, so let's talk about how this is helpful for creators. 
if you're a content creator or artist, we're trying to make money out here, right? I think for a lot of people, their end goal is to become a full-time creator. I think one in every three eight-year-olds want to be a YouTuber, not an astronaut anymore, which is insane. So when you think about this, how can you monetize? There's a lot of ways to monetize as a creator. I personally have a ton of videos on my channel about this, but what if you're able to utilize your community to make money? Now you're like, Jay, this is not new. There's Patreon. There's like membership clubs. This is not new shit. And you're right. As a creator, you can start a membership club where people pay $10 a month, right, to your community. And, th and that's that. But I think what NFT slash blockchain slash this whole talk around cryptocurrency, what this enables is a conversation around an investment opportunity. Like imagine your favorite artist. I'm going to use Ariana Grande. I don't know if you guys like her, but she's she's killing it. She created a token for, for her fans. And there's only like 50 of them. And you get one, right? And say you're when you get this token, right? You, you buy this coin or whatever, you are a token holder and you get to be invited to this club. You get to be invited to this like Discord hangout session with Ariana once a month to like make some bangers. If you decide to leave the club, you can sell that token or that spot to someone else. The market places the value on the coins. For Ariana, you know, every time you sell it, she gets a royalty. So she can she can still turn on the lights for her. And for you, you get an investment opportunity. Like if you look at Netflix and I subscribe to Netflix, if I sorry. <laughs> Like if you subscribe to Netflix and you cancel it the next day, you don't get that money back, right? But with, with blockchain, because it, it's a basically database tracking all these transactions, you get a kickback, you get to invest at, and also you get the community. And this is huge, right? You know, take Ariana Grande out of the example. Me as a creator, I was thinking to start a lot of these like products and membership platforms and all these things. But one of the things I realized is like as a creator, a lot of people experience burnout. You know, if you make content online, you have to post every week, every day sometimes. And that's a lot of work. And even with sometimes like platforms like Patreon, you have to like continuously put exclusive content. But what if you're able to rely on the community? The community is the value itself. So essentially it's passive income, but it's, it's not even that. It's, it's a long-term investment of the community. And I think the biggest problem that's preventing people to see this is just because people are trying to make a money grab like they're selling air this is a side tangent but like a lot of these people selling things are like illegal like the fcc is going to start to regulate a lot more of these nft people selling th these things because i think that you can't just sell air and unless there's a digital value added to it like a community or like a discord group i don't think a lot of these things are legal and as my friends and i are talking about to crypto lawyers we for sure know that logo Paul could be sued in the next few years because this is illegal. So I talked a lot about these crypto communities. What are some of them in action? So my friend Brandon Walsh and I talk a lot about this NFT crypto world. And we found this little group called the Friends with Benefits group. I'm not even joking. It's a real, it's a real crypto community. Essentially what this group is, it's a, it's a group of friends on Discord. And in order to be a part of the group, you have to have 55 Friends with Benefit cryptocurrency tokens. Yeah, this is hurting your brain, I know. Essentially, it costs like $55. Instead of dollars, it's this cryptocurrency called the Friends with Benefits token. It's already been done. It just hasn't been normalized in the creator community yet. So one prediction I've had is I actually made a video three months ago, and it was an Ask Jay show, and someone asked me, what's the future of creators? One thing I said is, quote, I think that fans and brands are going to start to have equity in creators. I think the future of building a business for creators is equity-based brand deals. So instead of just having, I don't know, like McDonald's pay you for a 30-second sponsorship, I think the future is having, you know, equity in McDonald's for making that content. So now it's three months later and NFTs and tokens and people creating their own communities are starting to grow. I think this is the path for creators to monetize. I think that if you're giving your fans a reason to be invested in you, not only in you, your community to support you, but also you know them getting an investment opportunity, this is the future of creator economy. I think that you know for for a lot of people, Patreon enabled creators to make monthly revenue. But imagine you can, as a fan, also make money through being a participator in these communities, right? Buying and trading coins and tokens, I think is gonna start to be a huge thing. The Friends with Benefits example, like they only printed 10 million Friends with Benefits coins. So each coin raises in value, the more people are in it. So the value is based on the market, not the creator, it's decentralized. I just think this whole concept hurts my brain, one, but B, I think everyone should look into it. And if you're someone that's, you know, either a creator in the business, I hope this video was just at least a little bit helpful to explain what an NFT is, why it's important, and why I think you should consider looking into it. If you're now wondering, okay, Jade, how do I look into it more? I have a solution for you. 
So if you guys want to learn more about the crypto blockchain as a creator, I am starting a Discord group called The Green Room Club. This is a community of hundreds of creators trying to monetize, grow, and learn from each other. We also send fun memes. This is completely free. I'm closing this group in one week, though. The reason why is because I really want to create as many people as possible that are super interested in the cryptocurrency scene, and then each new month, we'll start to open up rounds. So check out the link in the description box if you want to join this Discord. I will be starting to host an event. My friend Brandon Walsh, who is a YouTuber with 1 million subscribers, and I are going to do a Q&A on on how cryptocurrency can be utilized with creators. So what's next for Jade? I have my company X8 Media, which is a digital agency that works with brands. And I also have my second company, Create, which is a creator incubator I started six months ago. I'm considering to open up a blockchain fund because one of the things that people don't know about NFTs is that it costs money to to launch an NFT, it costs gas. It's called gas, which is essentially Ethereum's. Um, it costs like a percentage of that to start. At my creator incubator, we help early stage creators grow and launch long-term businesses through their personal brand. And I'm going to start to open up more people to the program. We have three creators currently in the program of King Science and Nutshell and Jordan Sage, who are over millions of followers on TikTok, which is a great, amazing person to work with. Uh, we're gonna start to open up more spots. There's like a wait list of 500 people that want to be part of the incubator program. But the reason why I've been holding off is because I didn't know necessarily how the best way was to go about monetizing your brand. Because at the incubator you know, program, we've helped creators throw merch, get brand deals, all this stuff. But now I think with blockchain, I'm curious to know, and I'm still learning every single day about how to utilize this to monetize. And I think that what I'm going to do is on the Discord, I'm going to start to share case studies of what we do with these three creators in the program and share how the progress is going. We're going to launch an NFT for Nutshell Animations and King Science and all these fun projects. So make sure you guys join the Discord if you guys want to learn more about what I'm doing in my company in the incubator. And if these things are proven, we're going to start to open up more spots. And our next cohort slash round of people that can come to the incubator program will be starting in May. So join the Discord. We're going to start to have weekly events and check it out. I'm pretty excited. And in terms of create my other company and organization, I want to utilize my discord and community to, to kind of inform you on what's up. If this wasn't a good enough sell for you to join the community, I don't know what was. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I will see you guys in the next one. Let me know if you have any questions and join the discord if you haven't already. It takes five minutes to get an account. I love you guys so much and have an amazing day. Seriously, if your brain hurts from watching this video, you're not alone. <laughs> Bye guys.